welcome to a very illuminating episode of The Shutter School. I'm your host, Dustin Thompson, and I'm joined, as always, by my beautiful girlfriend-assistant, V. Now, you may be wondering, what the heck is with the blinking gloves and the torch and the fire and all that? Are we going to Burning Man? No, nope, sorry. Is it to help people with short attention spans? No, but those are really, really cool. Anyways, we are starting a three-part series on light painting. Why three parts? Because there are so many facets to this beautiful and exciting art form. We're going to start tonight with the most dangerous, but also my favorite, steel wool and fire dancing. So let's get started. Now before even attempting one of these shots, you're going to want to practice. I've been fire dancing for about six years now, and I still make mistakes. Most result in missing eyebrows and other hair. I would highly recommend starting with glow point. You can actually get some really cool shots with those as well. And you don't even have to worry about that burnt hair smell. Other than that, it's pretty much common sense. Don't do either around trees, dry brush, cars, or anything flammable. With steel wool, sparks can fly 30 feet or more in every direction. The last thing I need is a bunch of angry comments about how you watched the shutter school and now you burned down your mom's Prius. You should always have a safety system in place, whether it's a wet towel or a fire extinguisher, or in this case, a super hot firefighter. Like I said, accidents do happen. Be sure you wear clothes that you don't mind getting ruined. Sparks will burn holes in them, but the more covered up you are, the better. Now that we have all the safety mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's set up the shot. Before we get into settings, let's go over the equipment that we're going to need to do this shot. Here I have your standard boy chains, and I've connected them to this basket that I made out of chicken wire and baling wire. A lot of people like the mesh because it keeps the larger chunks of steel wool from coming out. You can also substitute in just your standard kitchen whisk. Here I have a lighter that I've uh, slightly modified to get a little more flame out of. That'll help me light the wool more evenly and quickly. The type of steel wool that you're going to use is also very important as well. I got this at the 99 cent store and it's very coarse and I could barely get it to light or stay lit. So basically, um, it's out of here. What you're going to look for is a wool with a grade of zero to, I guess you would call it four zero. The more zeros there are, the finer the wool is, and in my opinion, the better. Now on the camera side, we're obviously going to need a tripod. That's a must for any type of long exposure photography. I'll also be using a wireless shutter release to remove any shake from my photo. Before we get started, I'm going to take a flashlight and I'm going to focus on my subject. Now I'm going to switch to a manual focus. I'm doing this because the camera can't focus in the dark and I don't want it searching during the sparks. Now let's go over my settings. I'm going to be shooting in a manual mode. This will ensure that I have complete control over my photo. I'm going to be using a shutter speed of 30 seconds. This will ensure that I capture all of the sparks. I'm going to be using an aperture of f8. This will give me a really nice depth of field and it'll keep the photo from being overexposed or what's called blown out. I'm also going to be using an ISO of 1 to 200. This will bring the brightness down and it'll keep the shot clean and free of noise. Now, all these are just kind of a baseline setting. Uh, you know, it all depends on if you have other light sources or how much ambient light you have in your scene. And this is all just kind of a personal preference. Maybe you want your shot to be all crazy and bright or dark and creepy. That's one of the things that I love about photography. It's really all up to you. Communication between the subject and the photographer is very important. The performer should let the photographer know when the steel wool is lit, when they're about to start, and if they are in trouble at any point. The steel wool should be spun in a nice and smooth fashion. This will translate to cleaner lines. And also, the faster it is spun, the greater distance the sparks will travel. Alright, I believe we're ready to go. Let's spark it up. Here are a couple popular spinning styles.
Now after the spin, you're going to want to dip the baskets into a bucket of water because they're going to be extremely hot. Well that pretty much covers the technical aspects of steel wool. Now it's time to let your creativity run free. You can add speed lights, gels, whatever else you want to make the shot your own. One thing that I find fascinating about steel wool as well as fire poi is that it brings its own light source. So if you're in a tunnel or under a bridge or surrounded by rocks, it's actually going to illuminate your surroundings. Another thing that I like to do to really spice up my steel wool shots is add a wall for the sparks to reflect off of. That really adds a really cool touch to the pictures. Okay, now let's switch gears and talk about fire poi. Well, fire dancing in general. These same rules could apply to fire snake, fire hoop, rope dart, staff, or really any other type of fire toy. All I have is poi, so that's what we're going to go with. A lot of the techniques and rules are the same, but we're going to go over a couple of differences. First off is clothing. I prefer something a little more snug. Pretty cool, huh? The reason for this is, is that Poi has a lot more tight and technical tricks and I don't want the firehead getting caught in a big baggy sweatshirt or baggy clothing at all. The other difference is that since there's not flying metal going in every direction, I like to bring the camera in closer. But be sure that you keep it out of harm's way because the Poi chain still will reach out a considerable distance. As far as equipment is concerned, the camera is set up exactly the same with the tripod and the wireless shutter release. And the Poi is set up really similar as well. The only difference is this time attached to my Poi chains are my fire heads. I actually got the chains and the heads as a kit from homeofpoi.com. I also have the standard lighter, nothing really special about that. And for my fuel I am using Clean Heat which is a kerosene based liquid that you can find at most hardware stores. I also have two towels. Notice how they're different colors? I do this for a reason. I use one towel to dab the poi off after I pour the fuel on them, and the other towel to extinguish the flames when I'm done. Now think about it for just a second. A fuel soaked towel does not put out flames very well. I made that mistake once, hopefully you won't. When it comes to the camera setup on the fire poi, there are a lot of similarities. You're going to use the flashlight to focus, you're going to be shooting in manual once again, your ISO is still going to be 1 to 200 and your aperture is still going to be somewhere around f8. What the difference is going to be is the shutter speed is going to be somewhere between 2 and 10 seconds depending on the amount of trail that you want and the move that you're trying to capture. I try to keep in constant contact with my performers so they can let me know when they have a big trick coming up. Obviously if this is during a live performance, I'm not going to have that luxury. Take a couple of test shots to see if you're happy with the amount of trail and adjust accordingly. Now if your shutter speed is way too long, you're going to end up with this big ball of fire. But it really all boils down to your personal preference. speed light up on a stand with a wireless trigger. You can use either a grid or a snoot because you don't want it to be overpowering, but it's really cool if you want to bring attention to the performer. For best results, set it to rear curtain flash. What that means is the flash will go off at the last second and it'll freeze the motion right at the very end of the trick. Really cool. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it, but please stay safe. Be sure you subscribe to The Shutter School. Our next episode is going to be about light writing and drawing. I'd love to see your point and steel wool shots. Feel free to share them with me at facebook.com dash Dustin Thompson Photography. Well, until next time, I'm Dustin Thompson, and I'll talk to you soon.